Are there ethical dimensions to this whole discussion of awe and wonder? And I mean, is it does it lead to actions that we should take, uh, appropriate behaviors that would make the world a better place? Or is it just kind of eh, intellectual curiosity? It's, it's cool to have these experiences. Well, the, and Tanya said dissolves the boundaries. I thought that was an ethical, really interesting ethical point of view. If something helps you dissolve the boundaries between you and other people, then surely that will make you more think more about the common good. It might make you think more uh, along the line of virtuous actions in terms of your own actions and their negative effects on others. I don't know. Or maybe break down the boundaries between the in-group and the out-group. I mean, those are empirical questions that I, I don't know the answers to. But I think one thing that we do have reason to think is that the kind of humility that's involved with experiences of awe, which involve a recognition of what you don't know, um, might be very valuable in helping people uh, bridge the sorts of debates that often seem very intractable. So there, there is some evidence that just getting people to appreciate that they don't really understand that that political that, that policy very well that they thought they really advocated very strongly, just getting them to realize that there is a sort of gap between their level of professed certainty about, say, a political view and what they actually understand about the mechanics of it can help people come together across these kinds of divides and have more productive conversations. Um, and so I think, I think that's one reason to think that maybe this is valuable, um, not in a very direct way, but in an indirect way via the ways in which it might make us more open to other points of view and the way it might prompt further inquiry, right? If it's the, if, if awe is part of the basic research capacities of, of humanity, uh, we don't always know what the downstream consequences of pursuing that are going to be, um, just as we don't in science. But if you look historically, uh, all of our great advances have come from having a focus on really just trying to understand the world around us. And so, but, but that's really fascinating. Yeah. What you're, I mean, you're really making the case for uncertainty, mm -hmm. for the value of uncertainty, Absolutely. and that that will that that leads to very positive outcomes. Yeah, I mean, if you go back to the example of religion and, and all related to that, right? I mean, religions, different kinds of religions do come with sort of a moral code of behavior. They sometimes clash with one another, but they do have one. And a lot of that is motivated by us. So if you take that model and you make it secular, and you say, perhaps now what we should be doing is we should be creating a reconnection of our species with the natural world because our world is sick and we are really making it even sicker and we are not paying attention to that. And it is a real serious existential risk. And if we relate to the awe of the world that exists out there and us being part of that, and we use that to perhaps rescue some new sort of moral morality, then you can say that yes, there is a new ethics that would emerge from this, which is the ethics of us the human species, not this tribe against that tribe, the human species as guardians of the planet mm -hmm. and of all forms of life in it because this is the only one we have and it's the only one where we can survive for a very, very long time. And, and, and that is secular and that is very necessary, I think, for us to survive the next few days. And that's coming from, I think, a connection of awe and the relationship with the natural world.